the Grow Your Business series with Kim, Emily, and Mallory. Today we are talking about vulnerability in business. So this topic is all about exposing yourself, being transparent, letting the world know who you are, maybe even how you see the world. It might even be your beliefs, what's important to you. And if you, we're, we're, we're debating on what to call this. So it's like the perks of vulnerability or the repercussions of vulnerability. So what happens when you are vulnerable? So first of all, we know that in order to be transparent, you're going to have to be somewhat vulnerable because you're going to have to put yourself out into the world and say, this is who I am now. This is what I offer. I would love to serve you. That within itself will give you a vulnerability hangover. What we're going to talk about today specifically is the physical manifestations that show up in your body when you are vulnerable. And we're going to use personal stories. So we've all experienced this. You guys know about the cycle of transformation. I talk about it all the time. And it is one of the, so first there's the imposter syndrome where you just kind of freak out. And then you got the physical manifestations where it shows up in your body, your fear and worries and doubts like boom, exposed, and then your relationships and then your money. So for the topic of vulnerability today and how it shows up in your physical body, I'm going to start with Mallory because she's got a few examples and then Emily can use hers. And then I will tell you a couple of mine. Um, so currently as we are speaking, I have this year is like congested blocks, like sinus congestion in my head. My ear is like stopped up. Like I can't hear out of it. It's this weird pressure. I don't like it. And now, (laughs) um, now I can, the first thing I do whenever something physically comes up is I go and look up the, like, what emotion am I not feeling or not recognizing that's contributing to this or to what like thoughts and beliefs are coming up that I'm not paying attention to. Um, and I haven't really found the one that really stuck yet, but we keep looking and, um, um, it's something about what, what we're doing and what what's coming up. So I'm, I'm still not solid on that one, but not too long ago, a couple of months ago, I had, um, a, my left foot, like, uh, like one of the bones in my left foot was really hurting me to the point where at sometimes I like couldn't walk on it. Um, but it wasn't constant. Like everything, the physical therapist in me looked for all the reasons and none of it made any sense. Um, like I could run on it and it was fine while I was running and then afterwards. So like none of it physically made any sense to me. Um, I looked that up it took me like a couple of weeks before of feeling it before I was like, let me go look this up and see what this could be. I forgot the exact what it was, but it was something about not taking care of myself, like my needs. I'm thinking of like when the, every time it comes to move to the next level, like going this way, going out there, how you get the same thing in the left side. And as soon as we have the conversation about it, energetically, it's almost like the, the older version of you on the left side of your body is like solid and you're pulling away from it. And it's like, no, 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 no. And that awareness like creates release. And that's where you were pretty much so like, wait a minute, I didn't do anything different. I didn't go get adjusted. It's really just understanding that there's an aspect of me that is afraid that's holding on for dear life. I feel like that's the clearer example from you, but I might be, I might be off here. No, that makes sense. Um, because it it happens like that every time. (laughs) Um, I guess it just depends on how much awareness I have at the time to be able to receive whether like me doing my own research or having a conversation and just, I wonder if it's this. Because a lot of times I can't see for like, I can't see myself. No, absolutely. I can remember every time, like Mm -hmm. all of the, and the conversations and the, you're like, holy shit, it's gone. Like, how did that, what just happened? Like I had the conversation. Now my knee stopped. Like, like it's Mm -hmm. from my perspective, seeing it, it sounds so much clearer than what you just said, but (laughs) 
I'm going to, I'm going to lead with Emily's. I, it's like, I have the example in mind that I want you guys to give. And I'm thinking of Emily <laughs> when she went to Texas with her back and she was just like, I, I'm going to the doctor. I'm going somewhere. There's act, there is something wrong. It comes up all the time. Yeah. It's still here. To, you want to tell that story? Yeah. So this time last year I was in Texas for Christmas break and the drive down to Texas Corey was mid ear infection, speaking of ears. And I was in the back seat, like tor- turning towards him, trying to comfort him in the car seat on these long drives. So I thought me being in a bad po- physical position led to this horrible backache. Cause by the time we got to Texas, I couldn't get out of the car. I was crying. I could not get out of the car without Chris helping. And I, I was like, We're, I'm going to be here for three weeks. And I just pulled my back out. So We get to Texas and the next morning, I literally was crawling to the floor and I was like, (laughs) it's like the worst pain I've experienced in my low back in my whole life. And it was like in the spinal cord, not like muscles around the hips. It was like twinging pain. And I had a spinal tap to have a C-section and this was worse, like that, that feeling in the spinal cord. So I, I called Kim. Cause I was like, I'm, I'm lost. Like, I don't know what the hell just happened. And I'm like, something is very wrong with my spinal cord. Like I'm about to get, be paralyzed. It, the, all the alarms were going off in my body. Like something is severely wrong. This can't be just emotional. <laughs> I, I hear you, Kim. I get the understanding, but I think there might be something actually wrong with my spine. <laughs> and she's like, calm down. and she helped me through it. It, The pain didn't go away until I got back here. Um, it was to New York at the time, but three weeks of pain and it, it gradually went away after a week and a half. But ever since I worked through the emotional piece of that, which was, I was about to start something completely new with business. I was not feeling supported by my husband emotionally with what I wanted to do and start, um, in the next year. And I just felt like my whole world was just rocky and on edge and about to fall apart within myself. Like, who am I? What I was going through that identity crisis and my lower back has always been that place that pops up every time I have one of these internal crises. Um, but I'm so happy to say that was the last time I've had a lower back episode. So all this whole past year with moving so many times, gardening, running around with Corey, all these things that you think would trigger pulling my back. I felt strong and stable physically with that, the whole, through all of those experiences. And I think it's because I went through it and got to the root issue emotionally with Kim. Thank God. Um, Cause I'm so glad I didn't go like to a doctor and say like, please do back surgery on this spinal cord would have screwed me up. Well, I was kind of thinking of that. It's almost like that was like the permission call. You're like, listen, I know you believe in all that stuff, but just so you know, like this is legit. And I'm like, need or want permission to go and check it out. And I'm like, I don't know. It was during the holidays or whatever. And it's like, let's just do some stuff and see and see what comes up. And then you had a thing to say to yourself the whole entire, I don't even remember that part, but I remember going through it changing it twist and then you had something to keep telling yourself do you remember what it was is it I'm safe I can do this I got my own back like yeah I I really fell back onto like I'm always supported and I was in Texas where I'm from with my family with my cousin who is a hundred million times supportive of me no matter what I do like she's one of those people that I could be like I need to to hide this body <laughs> come help like she's one of those people in my life so it was seeing it physically around me like, okay, if it all goes down, I actually am supported by people who really do love me. And I can always figure things out. I had to look back at my evidence of my life and say, wow, I've always picked up the pieces no matter what. So I was here thinking at my security was dependent on this or that, or how Chris feels or what Corey's doing. And I really had to come back to, I am safe. I'm supported and like pull up that inner power to go on. And it really has carried me through every experience this year, which has been 
chaos and crazy, I've had to come back to, I can always figure it out. I am safe. I have food. I have a house, like that solid foundation. And even, you know, within a month ago, those ideas have come up, but I've been able to calm it all back down before it came up as a back issue. So this, the work really does work. And it came down to like that horrible, horrible pain for me to say, okay, what the hell is going on? Would you agree that it is the vulnerability that become, that is the catalyst for it? Yes. Yeah. I never have physical stuff if I'm not being vulnerable. Like it's when, it's when I'm vulnerable to believe I can do something else when I want to go put out a big offer when, you know, for me, it was paying Facebook ads. I'd paid somebody 2000 bucks to run some ads and the very first time. And I was like, I'm going to take this mind body, the stuff we're talking about right now. I'm going to take this online to practitioners, health and wellness practitioners and coaches. And I'm going to go, you know, talk about it. And while I was talking to him, it was like, I was like, what is that? what is that? I remember like trying to pick up my right knee. And I mean, I can, I know it was like, and it was like, catch me. So I was like, I cannot sit. So I stood up to finish the call with him, like to send the money. And at the same time, I had this um, person coming in to work at my business. That was a chiropractor. And I was like, we're going to go do this mind body stuff. And we're going to help people heal their bodies with their minds. And like, it was, it was all of it. Like, and I remember that specifically because he had an office in Lafayette and I had to go as a patient because of, because of what was going on. And so I was like, I couldn't even like stay still, stand, sit, do anything. And y'all remember that it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. It was a 16 week, uh, traumatizing crises that happened. And I mean, I got the MRIs, I had the, um, surgeon, uh, appointment scheduled, all, all the things. And the report, you know, that it's, imp- that, uh, what do you call it? Um, the impinged. disc. Yeah, there was impinged bulging. root nerve, but what, yeah, the bulging disc. Um, there was three or four bulging discs and impinged root nerve. And so it was kind of like the, yeah, it's here. You got it. This is the evidence. But it was the same thing with my right labrum. I mean, my, my left labrum, when I was doing aromatouch training, like I had to do this. I ha- And I couldn't. When you have a torn uh, labrum, you can't, t- you can't move that way. And I was traveling, but I was so scared because I was like, oh my God, I'm going to get a divorce. My family's going to hate me. No one's going to understand because I had found a way to start traveling with work. And so I was going to Canada to do an aromatouch training. I had just done one in Pennsylvania, one in Tennessee. And like, I was getting all these offers to go and man, it just wouldn't stop. I couldn't even exercise anymore. I couldn't do yoga. I couldn't lift. Like I had to do like this to put my clothes on. Like I had to go around it. So I had the MRI done there and showed for sure a very, very deep tear. And it would have been surgical. And that is, I'm a hundred percent on both of those cases. I do feel when I'm vulnerable, when I go to do something else, I'll feel a little, tick, 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 a little tap and I'm, whoop, I'm able to like settle back in. So that's how I know for sure. And I feel like that with Mallory, every time it's something she'll, she'll say it. And then as soon as she recognizes it goes she, like, a, it's, I think it's a little more, um, strategic and easy for you than where your head, like I go to go do this and go do this, but actually it's not like that anymore. Yeah. Like I can see now it's just having the recognition. A relatable story, huh? Yeah. Like, like being able to pull myself out of it and look at like the big picture and say, Oh, this is what we're doing. And I'm thinking this about it. And so my, my body's distracting me are like holding me back from that. Yeah. So, um, but, but that's, that's the thing for me is, is being able to step out of it, step, like step back and look at the big picture of what's actually happening and being able to connect the dots like that. So it's just the awareness. Which is counterintuitive for you, right? Because yeah. You're very. Your mind, you're the physical therapist. I remember when you were working on me and you were so puzzled. I was like, there's nothing there. There's nothing wrong. And I was like, no, I couldn't move up. <laughs> it's like turning you would adjust it and this is before you were even in the coach training you were coming to work on me on the massage table in the back you remember well that's even like um it reminded me of 
all the patient, not all of the patients, but like, like there were times as a physical therapist that there were patients that were in excruciating pain and there was literally nothing I could do for them. And I was like, I don't understand. This doesn't make sense. I don't, this, something's not, something's not piecing together here. And that's whenever you were started telling me about the mind body work. And that's whenever I could see, okay, there, it, maybe there is something there. And that's whenever I, w- I was still seeing patients and I would bring kind of bring some of that to my patients and, and they would start telling me stories and then their pain would go away. And I was like, what? I, just, I didn't even do anything. <laughs> it was so crazy. So that was the beginning of me starting to say, okay, maybe there's a possibility of something for this. And then having my own experiences with it and knowing that I didn't do anything to physically treat myself or for so many times, like all the times I was having headaches. And they had gotten so bad at some times that even the medication, like taking medicine and doing all the releases on myself and everything, none of it was working. Mm -hmm. And I would finally break down. Let me open the yellow book and then go through the whole like, oh, well, so then eventually I just quit taking the medicine and just opened the yellow book instead. All right, my friends, that's what we got this week. You're going to be vulnerable and some stuff's going to come up. Maybe it's in your body. Maybe it's just fear. Maybe it's anxiety. And you're going to put yourself out there and then you're going to have a hangover. (laughs) It just happens. It's just a part of the process. Very normal. You won't die. Can, can, Can you give anyone who's listening, like, what would be the step? Like, okay, I have this information. What do I do? okay, my body's doing something because of my emotions. How do I relieve myself? So the first thing I would do for someone who's not in mind body work, or you don't know a mind body coach, I absolutely would say, get your, get, get to self-healing masters, like get into a community. I've trained coaches on how to work with people this way. Um, Get into a community to get the support because this is not something it's not easy. It's not an easy switch because all the indoctrination, however old you are, you have been indoctrinated your entire life to believe that it's a physical problem. So it's not as simple as just turning it, even Mallory being here every single day and it still comes up. So I would say to pause, to use the SOS, which is stop, open, stay. So it could be tapping, man, I feel it. I feel pressure in my head and you describe what you're feeling. Like it feels like the top of my head's going to blow up. It feels like my ears are like going to shoot something out. I can feel it between my eyes. Like you're describing and saying what it is. And so that's bringing the, the conscious and subconscious together and is bringing it into a new awareness. Just that can release it. So as far as connecting the dots, that actually is the deeper work. And Mallory's talked about resources and stuff like that. But to be honest, you can have the resource and not get the transformation because it's just knowledge and information. So if you don't have anyone to really help you understand it, it's just, she didn't, she would used to read that and it never, it didn't make any sense until we connected the dots. So first thing you're going to ask is what yellow book, what resources I want to know. I want to know. And you're going to think that that's the answer. Just like in human design, as soon as I say there, what book are you reading that from? Where are you getting that? And that is the mind. And the problem with that is it's not a mind problem. I mean, it is a mind problem, but it's not a conscious mind problem. It's a subconscious problem. And so more information is actually, I I do get into your body, drop into your body, squeeze your toes, wiggle your body, squeeze your move around, use the breath, go closer, as close as you can go to the pain, go closer to it. If it's in your eye, go into the eye and get even closer. And, and like, I want to, I want to turn it up. I want to feel it even more. That's the work I would, that's the very first step I would recommend. And then come into the more the mindset group, come into self-healing masters and start learning it for yourself so that you can take personal responsibility for your health. I I wish I could, I mean, you can go read some of the books and stuff, but it's actually, you, you're reading it from the lens of the indoctrination. That's why that's where the mess up is. And so having someone help you change the perception because Mallory can go to all of those clients at home and she can, she can bring it up and then they would talk about it. But then as soon as she leaves, they go right back into it. So it wouldn't have helped to give them a book. Yeah. And it was all of that. Like I've like been working with you for a while and we yeah. still have this come up and we have to be reminded by you, not of the book. You know, we have That's to be reminded nature. by someone else to be like, Hey, is this something else that is not just your back? 
it's not second nature for you yet, but it is everything for me. I can't unsee it. Like it's the lens I literally look through. And yeah. because I'm so consistent and so sure and so sold, that's what makes it different. So for you're saying for somebody who's new, who's just hearing about this, yeah. I would offer the, we have a podcast on SOS. We have some tapping, some meditations. There's lots of resources on uh, YouTube. If you haven't followed the YouTube channel yet, go ahead and do that so that you can get notification when we add these. But, and what Monique and I are talking about in our series, the mind body series, is how to, how to recognize and what to do about this. But mm -hmm. just know that if you're in business and you're doing new and daring things, that is very normal for this to come up. Go ahead, uh, Mallory. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was, I mean, I mentioned the book because I do go back and reference it, but it, before it could um, actually help me to like put the pieces together, I had a lot of experiences where I had the shift in the perception because I've been doing the work for almost seven years now to, to be able to do. So I've had the experience and I have the ability to like, let you take me to that subconscious place or where the dots can get connected. You're, You're on mute. mute. <laughs> You'll be in resistance if yeah. it's not in your awareness. Yeah. Like she was mm -hmm. in resistance. It's only that I mean, I was like, I'm adamant about it. I'm like, if that, okay, how about this? How about this? How about this? I was, I was like, I'm sure it is. Like, I'm just so sure. And eventually there's a swaying. It's like the luring in, you know, it's like eventually there's, because you tried everything and it didn't work. Now you're ready to hear it. It was probably the resistance that caused the headache. A hundred percent. It is. The resistance is I feel pressured. I need to do it a certain way and I can't do it a certain way. I'm actually learning how to do it with the flow. Yeah. That's not comfortable for me. And so I clamp down and then. Yep. No Explains yeah. my like 20 years of headaches. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, I move my body every day in some form. And like, this is like 27 years of like, I'm in deep belief about it. And when I look at my kids, my grandkids, my clients, we had somebody yesterday that, or day for yesterday, this week that exposed themselves, put them out there, put their offer out there, did some interviews and then whoa, stomach ache right after. And it's like, can I digest the feedback from the public? You know, I got sick to my stomach after I did that. You can, you can hear it. And then it's just a matter of connecting the dots. But until you're in that bubble of awareness, you're not going to even hear the dots. Yep. It's easy yeah. for people to understand when you're like, well, why do you get bubble guts right before you go on stage, you know, for a presentation? Why do you, your palms get sweaty? It's, it's obvious that your emotions are creating physical manifestations. So if you're not moving that energy out and processing it, it will get stuck in the body and present itself some way, somehow. And if you're not listening, it will turn into major pain major pain. So now it's like, we, we're all like, all right, let's just listen the first time. <laughs> yeah. It starts with a knock. It's already there right now. There's, there's a little thought that came through about what if I can't do it? What if I can't make the money again next month? What if they don't sign up? What if they cancel on me? What it's always there. So it's always passing through, but then there's, it's when the subconscious believes it. It's like, Ooh, that one. <laughs> and so it's very subtle. And so that was the knock. But if you're not living in more awareness or more consciousness, then you won't hear it. And so then you'll hear it again and again and again. Then you'll get the evidence. Then you're like, okay, now I obviously had to go all the way down to the floor for my attention to be caught. I mean, it's it's a human condition. It's how we, it's what we've been taught. Matter of fact, do you plan your meals or do you wait until you're starving? Do you wait into your heart? You know, it's like, we're like, yeah, I won't, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I won't need to pee. I won't need to eat. I won't need to right? <laughs> it's, it's the, it's human nature. It's just human nature. There's nothing bad or wrong with it. The problem is when you're moving into a business, growing your business, launching your business is that distraction will often stop you because you don't have anything to lose yet. Like for me now, if I buy into that bullshit, I got a lot to lose. I got a team to pay. I got expenses I'm tied in for the next five years. I've got like, I have a lot to lose. And so it is, it's a constant practice. I've brought it to my awareness to be like always noticing 
and sifting through my thoughts without like making it mean anything. I'm like, because thoughts are not the problem. Your thoughts about thoughts are the problem. I don't think thoughts are a problem. I think crazy stuff all the time. I like all the time, <laughs> detriment all the time. It's just the way my brain functions. Always waiting for the other shoe to drop, you know, and I'm like, up oh, there it is. Just let it go. It's like a little gnat. Just fling it off. Okay. I don't want this to go too long, but did you have anything else you wanted to chime in? Does this make sense? Are you guys um, experiencing this when you're vulnerable? Plantar fasciitis, knee pain, calf, um, like tension in the calves or muscle spasms, um, top, middle, low back, arm, shoulders, wrists, hips. Hips are a big part. Thyroid, um, hormone imbalance, vision, hearing, um, headaches, pressure, back of the like all of these things are very common when we're talking about, we, we would call this TMS. So there is another word for it, but I call it the mind body syndrome. And Dylan calls it, the, I'll have to remember this one. Too much. Yeah, too much shit or too much. Um, yeah something like that. He came up with his own name. So if I can get my 27 year old, 28 year old son to understand this, it took a few years. I know you can understand it. Just know that it's there. Don't go get crazy about it and go down a rabbit hole. Just know it's there so that you can move through it. That's the whole point of this podcast.